Tonight's mailbag is ably assisted by Bulldog Amber Ale by Half Pints Brewing in Winnipeg. They describe it as having a slightly nutty aroma, distinct caramel notes, and just a traditional British pub-style ale. Seems like a reasonable thing for a hot summer day. Yeah, it's not bad at all. I quite like that. Uh, let's see what's on the pile of mail over here. This guy says that it is heat shrink tube. I suppose that's always possible. That's something that I like to keep in stock. And yep, that's exactly what it is. Heat shrink tube. Fairly thin wall, kind of lightweight stuff. Get this off. There's quite a bit of it in there too. And where's the end? Where's the end of this? There it is. It says it is 4.0. Is that millimeters? That's about six millimeters across when it's flattened out. But as a circle, yeah, that's about four millimeters. And I would expect it to shrink to half that as two millimeters. Let's see what it does here. Yeah, it's about two millimeters, so 50% shrink, which is fairly normal for this kind of stuff. I got a whole bunch. I think that's a size that I didn't have a lot of, so that's why I bought it. Um, and again, heat shrink just really comes in handy for all sorts of wiring projects. Just to keep the electrons on the inside where you really want them. 5 meters black heat shrink electrical tubing wrap sleeving car cable 2 to 1 ratio as suspected and as demonstrated. Ah, this is why I bought it. One cent at auction for 5 meters of this stuff plus dollar two shipping so this cost me a dollar three canadian for five meters of heat shrink you can't pass that up it claims to be able to withstand 600 volts there's no way i'm going to use it on anything that big maybe 60 volts well that was useful if not too exciting let's see what else we've got here this says a usb cable and i can feel a cable in there so let's not slice into it So this is USB-C male at one end, USB-C female at the other end, and RJ45 jack in there, which I am hoping is actually Ethernet. So the reason I bought this is recently I got a Chromecast uh, TV streaming box video thing, and it natively speaks to the world via Wi-Fi. However, anytime the neighbors fire up uh, something... I don't know what, or anytime somebody's using the microwave oven in the kitchen, it conks up my, my Wi-Fi. So I'm hoping that this will uh, work with it, as some online articles tell me it should, to allow me to pass through the power and also get Ethernet, wired Ethernet, working on the thing. USB-C to RJ45 on-the-go Ethernet LAN PD charging hub converter adapter Android phone. Paid a whopping $16.75 Canadian, but at least it had free shipping, so that was cool. Um, and given all these keywords, it seems to be what I want. I hope. Nothing down here in the descriptors. 10100 for uh, Ethernet, so... That's probably that's way faster than Wi-Fi anyway, and as I said, it's not interfered with the same way Wi-Fi is. So hopefully this is a win. There are other devices like this. I could have got one of these USB-C docks or something, but a lot of these don't promise power pass through, and that's the important feature that I need because that USB-C is how the Chromecast gets its power. And Google actually sells something that does this same job but I haven't found any place local that stocks it and any place that wants to ship it to me. I have to create new accounts and pay more than I paid to our Chinese friends. So I'm going to take this risk. And there are other various versions of this same idea that you can get. Um, here's an article that looks at five name brand, aka much more expensive versions. But again, I'm going to try the one that I got here. And if that doesn't work, then I'll step up the price. What do we have next? It says conversion plug. Okay, let's see what you are. Oh, 
you'd say European to North American death adapter kind of thing. Claims to be good for six amps at 250 volts. Obviously, I'm not going to run it anywhere near six amps. But the reason I got it is I have this uh, transformer which steps up to 220 volts and has a European style plug on it. Ooh, very loose fit though. Um, and there are some things that I get that have universal power supplies that can work on either 220 or 110. And I just like to test that sometimes on, uh, on a device and doing it this way is a lot less janky than how I had been doing it. The way I had been doing it is with this abomination. A lamp holder that I salvaged off something, a couple of knockoff Weagle connectors, and one of those. Yeah, that is janky. So don't give me static about using something crappy like that. It's slightly less horrible than this. Electrical Universal Travel Charger Wall Plug Adapter Converter Plug US to EU. Available in a two different colors i chose the white and this one cost me an entire dollar 28 canadian with free shipping so even if it is crap it's cheap crap so i've not wasted too much money on it that's some interesting formatting uh just repeats that again six amps abs 110 to 250 volts one piece yeah what else do you say about something like this all right next up we have clasp, 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 and screw nut. Wow, that's a lot of things in one bag. Within a bag, within a bag. There are four different types of these P-clip wiring clips. At least P-clip is what I've always called them anyway. Um, these ones are 3 16 these are 5 16 these are quarter, and these are 3 8 I'm assuming that is imperial measurements. So here's what they are. Just run one screw through them, run your bundle of wiring through there, and clip it in place just to keep it from getting into trouble. I use these things for cable management in permanent and semi-permanent installations all the time. The bottom of my railroad has a bunch of them on it. Um... I have some on the back of my computer desk for things that never change or almost never change. And they're just really handy things to have in stock. And I'm pretty sure they were quite cheap too, so. 25 or 100 black nylon cable clamp clip UV resistant wire electrical hose loop fixer. Right. So there's the different sizes that come in and I grabbed all four of them. You can get them in 25, 50 or 100 pieces. So for 25 pieces of the 3 16 ones, it was $2.44 Canadian. 3 8 ones were $3.08. 282 for the 5 16 and 270 for the quarter inch. And you can see the metric equivalents there, but these seem to be designed to American specs. So there you go. That's what they've listed first. So there's the full set of specs on these things if you're really interested in the exact measurements. Uh, feel free to freeze frame it or click on the link if you want to uh, look. And the fifth and final thing in, it says it is a PC drive. Okay. I'll tell you right now, these aren't PC drives. Got a battery holder on that side two chips and a crystal on this side. With the battery and the crystal, I'm like 99% sure this is a real-time clock module. It says that it speaks I squared C, and yeah, there's SCO and SDA over there, so that confirms that. There's a battery input. Two chips can't read them. That one is a DS1307Z, and this one is an ATM TC066. So if it is, as I suspect, a real-time clock, one of them is going to be the clock module, and I think that's this one. And the other one is probably going to be battery management, if I had to guess. Two pieces, I squared C, RTC, DS1307, uh, AT24C32, real-time clock module for ARM, AVR, pick new. Right, that's what I thought it was. 
and I paid the princely sum of a dollar fifteen for two of these. Do I need real-time clock modules? Yeah, not really, but they could be fun to play with. So I grabbed this, and I mean, really, for that price, for what sixty cents each, sixty-two and a half cents each, why wouldn't I? No information about it down here, other than just more pictures of it, including three sexy angles of the battery holder. Wow. So let's look at the data sheets just quickly. The DS1307Z, which is what this one is, is in fact a real-time clock. 64 by 8 serial. So it needs a crystal, 32.768 kilohertz crystal, standard clocking crystal. Uh, it takes a 3-volt battery input. Uh, serial clock, serial data. Oh, it has a square wave output driver. Well, that's interesting. In case you needed a precise square wave. Supply voltage, four and a half to five volts. Okay, so you can run it off standard five volts with a two to three volt battery to hold its memory. And that other chip, what I thought was battery management, isn't. It is in fact just an EEPROM. Now why the clock needs an EEPROM, I don't know, other than I guess to store settings. What else are you gonna use an EEPROM for? 32K seems a little overkill for a clock, though. It's just an I2C EEPROM, so maybe there's just, maybe you can access the EEPROM on this module. I'm not sure. I'll have to play with it. Stay tuned. I'm sure I'll be looking at this and possibly other real time clock modules in the future. So, here we go. Another varied result. Um, interesting contents in today's Mailbag Monday, as usual. This is going to make the TV watching experience happier. This, I'm probably not going to use it that much, but I had to build that other contraption once. So even if I just use it once for the pennies it cost me, it's paid for itself. Heat shrink, always useful for stock, for stock in the shop. Same with these clips, always handy for stock in the shop. And these little real-time clock modules are going to be interesting to play with. And yeah, if you need a project to keep track of time accurately, seems like a reasonable way of doing it. Well, thanks for watching, everybody. I appreciate it as always. And a special thanks to my uh, YouTube channel members and my Patreon supporters. They get the videos early and, uh, and they just help keep these mailbags rolling in and, equally importantly, keep the beer fridge full. Thanks to everybody else for watching. Questions and comments down below as usual. I'll talk to you later.